Hey guys and welcome to another session on dynamic programming and today we're going to be talking about DPV 6.8 longest common substring. So with that let's talk about what the problem statement for longest common substring is. You're given two strings of length n and m. Let's call them string x and string y and you're supposed to find the longest common contiguous string subsets uh, keep in mind that it's a common substring and not a subsequence, so it has to be contiguous set of characters. And usually that's a mistake that people make. Please do not make that mistake. It's a longest common substring. It has to be contiguous. Now it can be shifted and somewhere within X and somewhere within Y, but it has to be contiguous. That's the definition. Now with that being said, Lij is going to be again our matrix, which we will fill shortly. And the definition becomes that if you define dynamic programming as Lij depends on Li minus 1, J minus 1 plus 1, if the ith and jth characters are the same or zero otherwise. Uh, usually in a common subsequence, this is not zero and you, you keep working out some other possible values uh, if the ith and jth character don't match. So here's the distinction that you need to remember. In substring, it's either a match or it becomes a zero and you move on from there. So with that being said, let's look at the solution matrix and how to fill that. Now the initialization condition is that when i equal to zero or j equal to zero, which is when the length of the string, one of the strings is zero. Now if either the the first string or the second string is of zero length, there is no match. And by definition, you can fill zeros here, which is there is a zero uh, length common substring because one of them is zero. Therefore, there is no common substring. Okay, it's easy, very easy, straightforward. Now, uh, the definition for the second part, as we said earlier, when you try to define one one, you have to compare, first of all, you can use zero zero to form this guy and if the x1 and y1 match then you can do zero l zero zero plus one or it is zero right so you use this to write this one if x1 and y1 match and so that's the definition using this you can fill up now in this case i show you an example now in this example i have the left string which is uh zero zero one wow and the right string which is wow now i've chosen this because i want to show you that if you shift the string it's not like i just compare this and this and then uh, you know it'll fail because it's shifted in this case um, even though it's shifted we end up finding the right length which is three in this case and it finds this algorithm finds the correct length of the substring which happens to be three. Now, the way you simply do it is you write the second string on the jth side, wow is written here, and 001 wow is written on this side. Keep in mind the indexing is a little bit different. When you do one, uh, one and one, uh, which is, you know, or, uh, you know, I guess this is initialization, but when you reach one and one, uh, you use this value, which is zero, zero, but when you point to x1 and y1, it's going to be x1 here and y1 here because that's the first character you will ever compare. So keep that in mind when, when you do i equals 1 and j equals 1, which is the first character. Keep that in mind that, that that's going to be your reference point is going to be the first character as you start. And that's going to be the 1, 1 case. And uh, accordingly, when you reach 3 on this, this is the third character. And when you reach 6 on this, which is the six characters. It's one to six and one to three here. Now you can follow this along and as you fill this, you will reach this to be three and that is your answer. So that's the longest common substring. Again, a quick recap. If you go here, the way you fill this matrix is you do Lij is Li minus one, J minus one, which is if those characters were not there, Ith and Jth were not there, you simply take the previous answer, and if i, th, and j, th are the same, then the substring is just incremented by one. Now, you reset it to zero and, and start looking forward again if the i, th, and j, th character don't match. So, with that being said, the only thing remaining now for us to figure out is what is the order. And the order, obviously, as you can see here, because you filled this matrix and each operation of matrix was constant time, 
therefore the whole matrix was filled in order m cross n time and the order is mn so that's it guys and this is the solution to dpv 6.8 longest common substring hopefully you enjoyed this and if you did please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you want to see more videos of the same kind and i will bring and continue to bring dynamic programming solutions to you via this channel thanks so much for watching and until next time bye bye